cool piece. It's a headboard that somebody had already, it must have been in another store, attached these cute little things here and you can hang some shirts or dresses or something off of it. But I ha don't like the color and it's attached this way and I feel like this probably needs a little bit more reinforcement because I think this is a really thin material. So. Um, tonight I'm just going to get started painting it. Alright, I'm going to lay this up on the table and it's probably going to shake the camera. I'm going to do it anyway. Oops. I apologize if I go out of frame. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is take these off. Grab my... thingies here. I'm just going to loosen these, take them off. I'm only going to paint the front side. I'm not going to paint this back side. So I don't know if you guys ever watch YouTube or any other. I, I watch YouTube nonstop. But that's where I go to find out how to do everything and anything. There's this couple. It's Jamie and Zeb and they are from Jamie Ray Vintage. And they do a bunch of YouTube videos. I think they do a lot of Facebook stuff and Instagram too. But they do a live every Wednesday. And they call it Waste Not Wednesdays. And I love that concept. And I don't want to act like I stole that from them. But I love that concept. So I kind of want to do that. Um, my, I've got a, a whole back room here at the cottage. Just full. I can't get this stupid thing off. Um full of stuff like this because I don't throw anything away thinking I can make something with it. Well, guess what? I'm going to paint it with it on because I can't get it off. <laughs> it's going to be like that kind of day. I can't get those off, so I'm just going to paint without it. But anyway, I'm just going to wipe this down, get all the gook and trash off of it. I'm not sure what kind of paint this is on here, but farmhouse paint pretty much sticks to everything. So I'm not going to pre-sand it. I'm just going to go for it. It does have a few little rough spots that I probably should hit. And if you have any flake in paint, you should take that off too. But anyway, if you guys like YouTube, go check out um, Jamie Ray Vintage. It's really cute. Um, it's a husband and wife team. He's pretty much quit his job and he's now helping her with her store. They started working out of their home painting furniture and um, just selling it on Facebook Marketplace. And they just last year opened up their own, own official spot um, location business. But they are rocking it and doing a great job. So I'm going to be using the gripper brush that we have. It's called the Grip. And it's only $12.99. It's a synthetic bristles, but it's made in Italy. Um, it is perfect fit for your hands. See how it kind of fits in that groove? And it's nice for flat surfaces. It's got a little bit of an angle to it, too, so you can get edges. But this, we sell this brush here at the store. Woo, dumped a bunch out. Um, so... I'm just going to start painting this. So what I am painting here is an old headboard that someone added some copper pipe and some cute little antique uh, doorknobs onto. I love this color right here. This is Turquoise Toulouse. Farmhouse Paint has over, it's like 33 colors and I've been owner and owner about getting some new colors and they're supposed to have a big bunch of new colors coming out really soon and some new products so I'm excited. I'm just gonna let that sit there and let it keep draining out. I'm not gonna waste a drop of paint. But this will probably take it's as actually doing really good as far as adhesion but usually I have to do two coats. And again, I'm just going to reuse this piece here in the store. I already kind of know where I want to put it. And it will hold some of our apparel. 
if you've been in our store, you've seen like all of, just about all of our fixtures are homemade. Either I made them or I bought them from somebody that handmade them. And I like that look. The shabby chic kind of look. Let me tell you about me. A lot of people that come in, I recognize them. I'm like, where do I know you from? I used to work at Broil Hill Furniture when we first, when I first, gosh, I'd been married maybe four or five years and when we moved to Granite and um, I first started working at Broil Hill Furniture. I was a computer programmer, believe it or not, and was a computer programmer for 25 plus years. But I always loved decorating, I loved fashion, always had a love for that. Never really thought about having a store, but life changes and things happen and here I am. But basically I programmed um, at Rural Hill for a long time. We moved away to South Carolina, which was a whole nother story that was kind of a failure and it was right in like 2008 when the big crash came. Remember when all the homes were getting foreclosed on and all that kind of stuff? Well, we moved to Seneca, South Carolina. My husband decided he wanted a whole different career and I was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's go for it. And it was right before the crash and like right when we moved, it crashed. And uh, needless to say, we bought a house that was more than we could afford. We ended, that, we ended up basically giving that house away, kind of short sell it or whatever, but we ended up getting rid of that home and, and moved back to Granite and started back to ground zero. And when I came back, we were only there six months maybe. There were no jobs. I could not find a job anywhere. People were getting laid off left and right and there just were no jobs. My husband went back to doing what he did before and he had to rebuild his business again. He's an appraiser and he had to rebuild that again. Anyway, my we ended up buying a house actually from my in-laws and they graciously, they financed it for us for a couple of years so we could get back on our feet. And my mother-in-law, some of you guys met me and Sally, um, y'all met us back decided she wanted to open a little home decor shop and some of you guys shop there and that's probably where you first met me and it was called Shop Summer Falls and it was in downtown Granite in this beautiful two-story brick house and that used to be her home and they moved into a different home in Granite and um, her husband had a shop upstairs <laughs> it's appraisal business and she decided to use the downstairs to start a, a uh, home decor business and basically it was um, like we went out and found things and repurposed it and we had a few new things in there but most of it was repurposed so anyway she called me up and said hey I'm thinking about doing this you want to help me and I, I didn't have a job so I was like yeah let's do it let's go for it and so shots on the balls was born and we were only open like Thursday through Saturday. And we actually had a lot of fun with it. And it would honestly, it would take us like Monday through Wednesday to shop. We shopped all, you know, Goodwill and uh, Salvation Army, antique shops. We, we just thrifted like crazy and was home making stuff or, you know, repurposing things and stuff flipping it and putting it in the shop and reselling it. And y'all, I love that so much. It kind of bore, it kind of cottages in the back of mine. It was not mine, it was Sally's. And, um, but anyway, in the back of my mind, I was like, this is awesome, I love it. And just people coming in and talking, and having fun and decorating and doing displays. I just, I was like, this is for me, I love this. So, anyway, we did that for almost a year, and anyway, it just got to the point, I, and I honestly, it's because I'm a control freak, 
we had a lot of fun with it and I started getting frustrated because I wanted to be open more and I wanted to do more stuff and um, it wasn't mine so I couldn't really control it the way I wanted to and and it's nothing against Sally I love her to death but she this was a this was fun for her but for me I was trying to make a living anyway I just finally got to a point I got you know it been it was probably in well, I tell you what happened. We we worked all the way through December and got the descent. You know, Christmas is crazy. And you boom, and then actually we were closed in January and didn't know when we were reopening. We just wanted some time off, and um, I just got it in me that I needed to go back to work. For some reason, I was like, I need to go back to work. The economy started doing better. I need some health benefits for my family. So I started job hunting and I did find a job. Anyway, I went back and I went to Sally and I just said, I'm going back full time so I won't be back. And she was like, oh, well, my youngest sister-in-law, uh, is her name's Jen, Jennifer, we call her Jenny Bean. She was like, Jennifer's pregnant and I am going to want to be there for that. I'm going to help her as much as I want. I was going to give the shop over to you and let you take over. But I had already committed to this job and it was like, knife in the heart. This cleat, this is a wall cleat, has this little level that slides in and goes right here, which is genius to help you keep it level. But it's open-ended on both sides, so every time I tilt it, it keeps falling out. That's why I keep getting up and down the ladder. But anyway, I am going to mark. I've got a stud here. I'm not going to be able to hit any more studs because I know that this building, that the studs are 18 inches apart. Actually, they're 24 inches apart. This is 18 inches. And anyway, I just know I won't hit another stud. So I'm going to make sure this is level, that it is level. I'm going to draw me about one, about three holes and do, um, actually going to do, I'll probably double up over here, do more of the anchors since this side won't have a stud. Do one on this end and maybe do three here. So I'm going to just, this says it's level. So I'm just going to mark the holes where I am going to put the anchors at. I'm going to slide this out so I don't lose it again. Chase it on the floor. Loosen this up just a little bit. And now I'm going to pre-drill holes for my anchors. the insulation so at least I know it's insulated right <laughs> all right let me switch up my bit grab my anchors and other screws I wish I was in two studs but it's just not possible so I'm just going to kind of overkill it I need my hammer back. Um, they were all about maintaining what they already had, which was very outdated and old already. It was not fun programming. It was more like fix this, fix that. It was very boring and it was stuff I had never done before. And so it was kind of hard. And, and going from being, you know, doing your, having your own schedule and doing your own thing to sitting down at a desk and for eight hours a day, it was hard. And I did it before and it was fine, but I didn't, I didn't know what I was missing, I guess. Awesome too, and I was on call for stuff that I didn't know how to fix, and I'd have to call somebody else to say, hey, how do I fix this? 
I just was not happy. And I, I worked, I think I worked there, I think it was a year. I think it was a year. Yeah, pretty sure it was. I don't know what happened to me, but I just started looking for something else. And I had a good friend, Delene, if you're watching, you helped me with this decision. I just talked to her about it. I was depressed. I was like, I really think I want my own business. I don't have any money to start a business, but I want a business. And um, I just started looking around for places. And you guys remember the little cottage? That's what I could afford. I couldn't afford a, a, a big space and, you know, any bigger than that, honestly. That's all. And honestly, I couldn't even afford that. Delene actually paid my, my rent for a couple months. I paid her back when I started making money. How that started is um, I just opened it up and started putting stuff in it. I was only open on the weekends because I was still working my full-time job. rest on that. Cross our fingers. It's going to work. I was trying to juggle both, so I was only open on Saturday and Sundays. And I had nothing in that store. Barely anything. Just a couple pieces of furniture, and I was trying to find clothes. I had not never been to the market yet. So, <clears throat> that was all very interesting, and I was scared to death of the market, because I had never been there. Hey guys, this is day two. Um, yeah, it shouldn't take this long, but it got late last night, so I'm coming back. So I'm going to hang a t-shirt up here on this rack so I can see how far down I need to come with this guy so that the t-shirts will hang freely. I want them just to be like right above it like that. This is an extra large. That should be as big as I need. So right now I'm just going to Take the screws out and then lower it down to about right there. All right, here we go. All right, so I'm in this job and I started, you know, I found that other place, but I, I forgot to tell you guys, I, I started coming home every day and just crying to my husband that I hate this job. I'm so, I, it literally, I don't know how to explain it other than bored to tears. I didn't like what I was doing and what I was doing was super boring and my creative side was just being stifled and I just, uh, so anyway, I was trying to juggle opening that new store and all that good stuff. So anyway, I did that for but probably a month and a half. Your, you want your screw. To go through this and plus you got a probably a half inch of drywall to get through and then you need it to go into your stud so turn this around so you can see as you can see it takes up about that and then if you do a half inch I get about a half inch or an inch into the stud probably should need more I don't know I'm not putting a lot of weight on this so I think that'll be good and I, I was like, you know what? I, I need to be open more days so people can find me. Because I, I had a lot of people, like the antique store was saying, oh, if you'd have been open, we had some people that wanted to come see your shop. And of course, I wasn't open. So I talked to them and I was like, well, if you know anybody that needs a part-time job, uh, let me know. And, they, you know. and honestly, like this is a God thing. Catherine, you guys have met Catherine Park. She was working for them at that time part time and she was wanting more hours. And so he offered her up and said, Hey, she's needing some more hours. Would you be interested in Catherine? And I had already met Catherine because I honestly, actually, I had a booth in there too. I had started selling things. So I already knew her and knew she was sweet and all that good stuff. So I talked to her and she said, yeah, I'll help out. So we started being open Thursday and Friday and then I would come work the weekends. When that happened, um, I started, like at work, I started getting 
phone calls. She, you know, she's there by herself. She doesn't know how. I didn't. I really didn't have a point of sale or anything. We did everything with a calculator, and I think I had a really old um, cash register machine. And she would call with questions about the credit card machine or or about product that forgot to have a price on it and stuff. And so I started getting a lot of phone calls at work and started to get noticed. And then. Um, my work started suffering a little bit because I was so preoccupied and excited about that job that I just didn't want to do anything but that and my job started suffering. Needless to say, um, I got called in one day and was given the choice to either buckle down, buckle down and work directly with uh, my supervisor or quit. Uh, and so I went home and I talked to my husband about it and I decided to quit. No, it wasn't smart because we really didn't have a lot of money. But my husband knows if the wife ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. And so he's like, okay, let's go for it. And so I went back Monday morning and they were shocked. I walked in. And they're like, okay, so are you ready to get busy and really buckle down? I'm like, no, actually, I decided I'm done. And I just spilled the beans out and I apologized to them. I'm like, I'm so sorry, but this is not for me. I have started this new business that I'm really excited about. And my, my heart is not here, it's there. And I think it would be best if I just leave and on peaceful terms. They were like, okay, good luck, and they were really nice about it. And so, once I left, I can remember the day that I left work, my last day, I walked in the cottage, and told Catherine, I was like, well, I can't work today, and we're going to be open seven days a week starting next week. <laughs> and then I hired another person to help out. So, uh, Catherine worked one day, and Linda Smith, if you guys know her, she worked for me another day, and I would come in and work with them, and then the other days I was there by myself. Um, eventually, Evelyn came on. You guys have met Evelyn. She's the, the beautiful older lady that is here sometimes. It's very fashionable. She came in, um, and anyway, that that's basically how it started, and now it's Gosh, eight years, eight years. I started in 2012. 2012. January 2012 was when I first opened the doors at the cottage. It was just me. And here we are in this year store. And it's now eight year. Okay, I got it up. I got the walls painted and patched up so it looks really good. So I am going to wash all my aprons and put them back right there. And then we're gonna get doop, doop, two really cute t-shirts to hang right there that are related to painting furniture. And anyway, I think I'm done. just about except for a few um, that have worked for me I know they're here for a reason for a season and for a reason and I'm very thankful to all of them I still love it and here I am painting and talking to you guys Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed my story. I know it was rambling and long, but um, sometimes you don't realize the road or the story behind how something gets started. Peace out, and God bless, and I'll see you maybe next week, I hope. See you later.